Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Vadim and I'm an iOS developer at Finn. And my name is Eva, I'm a user uh, experience designer and interface designer at Binding & Bogen, a company which built native apps. But uh, last year we both uh, worked at Hyper, it's a digital ag agency here in Oslo. And there we got a chance to work for a Norwegian streaming, streaming company called uh, Riksteva. Uh, and there we helped them to redesign and develop uh, their TVOS app. And that was really fun and illuminating experience where we got a chance to learn more about TVOS design and development. Mm, so we are here today to talk to you about designing and developing for TVOS. Uh, we will first give you guys a short introduction. Then we will go over some basics. And next, Vadim is going to talk to you about uh, interface elements and show some code examples with you guys. And then we will jump into interaction, which is, which is quite different on tvOS compared to other devices. Uh, and we are also going to share with you how we collaborated toge uh, together during this project. And lastly, we will sum up the key points of our presentation to help you guys remember the most important things. So, before we get into tvOS and its unique set of design and uh, development challenges, let's look at our beloved device, the TV. <laughs> TV is a big part of modern culture, and it's a great way to be entertained and to escape our everyday routine. Uh, it is uh, a device which multiple people can enjoy together at the same time, and we use TV to play, <laughs> to, to learn, to play, <laughs> and to connect. Uh, this shared experience makes the Apple TV unique from the rest of Apple's devices. Uh, take iPhone, for instance. It's super personal and we hold it in our hands and we interact with it directly from a short distance. Uh, but with the, the Apple TV, we interact with the TV through a remote. <laughs> Is it me? I don't know. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna touch my face. <laughs> uh, and the TV screen is far away from you. So the way, uh, because of the distance from the screen and the way we interact with the TV, you have to design differently for tvOS compared to other Apple devices. So now let's go and look at some basics. Oh, this is falling down. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Apple Human Interface Guidelines is a great way, are a great way to get you started and to learn the basics. This was kind of my bible during our project at Riksteve. It contains uh, best practices and uh, recommendations of how to develop and design great apps for TVS. Uh, and by using the platform's uh, provided standards, your app will feel native. But remember, it's only a guide. You should uh, keep a balance between the brand of the app you're making and the platform guidelines. Um, when designing for tvOS, you only need to think about one screen. And this is a thrill compared to mobile and desktop, where you have to consider <laughs> many different screen sizes. <laughs> so <laughs> design with the screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, uh, unintentional cropping can occur on older TVs, so keep the main content of your app uh, away from the edges. Uh, a great rule is to avoid 60 pixels from the top and the bottom and 90 pixels from the sides. So when it comes to All the time? <laughs> oh, it wasn't me! <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, when it comes to overscanning, uh, you can use safe area layout guide there. Uh, and it helps you ensure that your content is not cut because of overscanning. And safe area layout guide presents the area not covered by the screen's uh, basal. 
Uh, it's also helpful when you have, for example, UI navigation bar and UI top bar. Uh, so then you know that it's, it doesn't block your content. And it was introduced in iOS 11. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the Apple TV um, displays standard resolution images for HD TV and high resolution images for 4K TVs. So uh, your app should uh, provide f images for both formats. So um, uh, yeah, you should, uh, <laughs> all assets of your app should then be at 1x and 2x resolution. Uh, as I mentioned before, a key factor that makes TV unique is our distance from the screen. We are on average three meters away from the TV screen. And this is significant. So you need to be aware of that distance when creating the layout for your app. Uh, this means uh, making bigger or larger uh, graphic. Uh, uh, OK, that may, means making interface uh, elements such as graphics, text, and uh, buttons larger. And this will probably feel a bit strange if you're used to designing apps for iOS. Uh, because of the, it's a more, much smaller screen. Uh, so this will make sure that uh, the user don't have to struggle what's on screen if you make everything bigger. And you should also test your design on the TV screen from a distance, so you can see if it's possible to read and see all the elements. Uh, in addition to increasing the graphic size, you should also import uh, include plenty, plenty of spacing between the elements. Uh, and this will help the user see each individual item and also make it easier for them to navigate through your app and select items. Um, another thing to keep in mind is uh, off-screen uh, items. Um, Rows and columns that goes beyond the screen should be aligned in a manner that shows content uh, that goes beyond the screen. So the user understands that it's possible to navigate further in your app. Uh, and if you follow Apple's human interface guidelines for a grid layout, the, your elements will be aligned as it should. Uh, we, in our project, we actually used uh, many grid layouts that Apple provided, provides, because there's a grid layout from three to nine columns, which is really great, and it showcases content well. It's easy to navigate through with the remote, and it's easy to see from a distance. So I truly recommend to check that out. And Apple provides also other beautiful, consistent layouts. Uh, that make content the center of attention. Uh, but uh, the and also the layouts are highly customizable. Uh, you just have to be understand how the purpose of the layout before using it and make it tasteful. Uh, San Francisco is a great uh, system font for tvOS and it's also Apple's default font. Uh, there are two variants of this font which uh, uh, showcase or <laughs> uh, which uh, were designed for high legibility on a big screen. Uh, there is San Francisco text and San Francisco displays, display. Uh, and, there, and if you use San Francisco in your apps, tvOS automatically displays the most the appropriate text uh, style based on point size. Uh, so San Francisco is a great f uh, font for most apps, but if you want to use a custom font, make sure to, that it's legible from a distance and that it, it access, accepts uh, accessibility settings, because the, TV, the San Francisco text or font um, accepts uh, accessibility settings. <laughs> Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that reading a lot of text uh, from a distance uh, on a TV screen isn't much fun and it strains the eyes. So uh, try to limit the text amount uh, on your app and show images, illustrations or animation instead to communicate uh, the content. And lastly, the hierarchy of your app is another factor to consider. Uh, content has to be easy to access and uh, instant. 
So keep the hierarchy uh, very simple, because giving the users too many choices will make it harder to navigate through your app and to understand what's on screen. Uh, a great way to organize your content is to use the tab bar. And the tab bar, you, uh, you can consider the tab bar as the menu for your app, where you organize all the content uh, diff in different sections, and uh, which are easy to access. OK, so in the end of this section, I just want to talk a bit about themes on TVS. As you may know, there are two themes uh, that you, as a user, can choose in settings. It's a light and dark theme. Uh, and uh, we think that it's important to respect this choice. So if you had time to design your app both for light and dark theme, uh, then you can uh, override right collection the change method uh, in your UI view controller or UI view. And then you just switch uh, user interface style. And then you can uh, check if it's a light theme or a dark theme and then change your background color, for example, or your text colors. Uh, according to the current theme. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about interface elements on TVS. Uh, when you work with uh, TVS, uh, you usually just import UI kit the same way as you do on iOS, and you use pretty much the same UI components, but they, of course, look and behave a bit differently. So let's look at some examples. Uh, so here we have a screen uh, where we have a UI split uh, view controller and it has a table view on the left and a collection view on the right. And in terms of code, it's pretty much the same as an, on iOS. You just get more delegate methods uh, to work with uh, the focus engine, but we're going to talk about it a bit later. Uh, so as for the table view, it has this standard look. Uh, it's not like highly customizable, and uh, according to Apple Human Interface Guidelines, you should use it mostly for text-based content. And that's because it's mostly used for navigation to switch between different sections, like in this case. Uh, as for UI collection view, uh, most of the time we work with uh, multi-dimensional collections. Uh, and, uh, you can, of course, use sections, like UI collection use sections, but it's not going to work if you have, for example, independent scrolling uh, on your horizontal rows uh, or like infinite carousels when you have to prefetch when you scroll or go from the last one to the first. Uh, and in that case, uh, you can solve that by having a wrapper UI collection view uh, that represents uh, rows. And then on every cell, uh, you can have uh, another UI collection view that represents columns. Just be careful because uh, it's reusable cells. And if you place UI collection view there, you can get some unexpected behavior. Uh, so the next one is alert. It's used actually a lot. And as you can see, uh, in terms of code, it's the same as on uh, iOS. You just create UI alert controller with uh, some title, optional message, and add one or more actions that represent uh, buttons on the screen. Uh, and then it looks like this, because aside from that configuration, it's not super customizable. Uh, and as you can see, it takes the entire screen. And that's why Apple doesn't recommend to use it very often, uh, because it's kind of uh, disrupts user experience. So you should uh, minimize alerts in your app and use it only for some sort of important messages. Uh, the next one is Digit Enter View. And it actually comes with the TV UI Kit framework <coughs> that was introduced in uh, TVS 12. And this is kind of cool, because we didn't have that before, and we had to implement a lot of uh, uh, standard UI elements uh, over and over again from scratch, even though they are always, uh, or not always, but usually present uh, in uh, most of the TVS apps, especially in Apple apps. Uh, so, for example, this digit entry view is used for entering passcodes. And now we can actually, with a pretty simple setup, uh, create this kind of view. 
Uh, so in this example, we just create TV digit entry view controller, set some title text, prompt text, number of digits, and say whether this uh, field is uh, secure entry or not, give it completion handler, and then we get this nice view, and it's familiar to users because they usually see it in TVS apps. And uh, as I told you before, uh, we had to do it from scratch uh, before we got uh, TV UI kit framework. Uh, the next one, and it's also from TVUI Kit, uh, it's a poster view, and poster view is a lookup. So what is TV uh, lookup view? Uh, it's a view that combines multiple UI elements uh, to a single interactive unit. Uh, and what it means is that when you focus on that uh, kind of view, uh, all the elements uh, move together, uh, so you don't have to implement custom uh, focus animations like we had to do before. Uh, so TV poster view extends TV lookup view, uh, and uh, it extends it with uh, image, title, and subtitle. And in addition to that, you get header and footer uh, that you can set uh, from uh, TV lookup view. So if we create two poster views and uh, place them in a horizontal uh, stack view, it's going to look like this. And as you can see, uh, when you focus on the cell, uh, both the title and subtitle, they move down uh, together uh, with the image. Uh, and yeah, it's what we expect from this kind of cell. It's, uh, uh, but before, we had to implement it manually. Uh, TV monogram view is another one from TV UI kit. Uh, and you use this kind of view mostly for some sort of information about people. Uh, so when you set image, first name, last name, and optional title and subtitle, you're going to get this nice silk circular view uh, and if you don't set image, it's going to show abbreviation of your first and last name. But Apple, of course, recommends to use images because it's better to get more rich content in your apps. Uh, on this slide, you can see some common elements that we use both uh, on iOS and TVS. Uh, it's activity indicator, progress view, page control, UI segmented control. There is like no difference between iOS and TVS, it's exactly the same. And if we place them in a vertical stack view, uh, you can see that they look slightly different, but they're still familiar to what we know from uh, iOS. Uh, and one thing to mention about UI progress view uh, is that for, if you, for example, have a UI collection view and you place a progress view on every cell, uh, then eventually you could get some performance issues. And that's because UI progress view uh, uses UI visual effects view under the hood. Uh, and it's kind of expensive to render it. Uh, so if you don't need uh, all this fancy stuff, you can always create uh, your custom uh, progress view with layers. Uh, but it's only if you really jump into this kind of problem. Uh, and the last one that I want to show you in this section, uh, because there are more UI elements, of course, uh, but I try to gather some new and important ones. Uh, so search is pretty important on TVS, because if it's not a game, uh, you probably want to search for some content in the app. Uh, and uh, if you want to have a search bar, you just create UI search uh, controller, uh, you wrap it in a search container view controller and show it in a UI navigation controller. And then you get this standard uh, search bar, as you usually see on TVS. Uh, like, if you want to customize it, you can set some background color underneath and so on, but it's pretty standard look that you see most of the time. It could be either light or dark. Uh, and uh, Apple recommends to minimize text entries in your app as well, uh, because it's not that easy to enter some text with your remote. And even with your phone, it's not that convenient. 
So if you have some s uh, recent searches, it's nice to show them like in a table view here so user can navigate to the next screen just by uh, one click. <laughs> so now let's jump into interactions. Interaction on tvOS is quite unique. And if we map out Apple's uh, devices uh, from a scale of, uh, to loose interaction and to precise interaction, it will look like this. Uh, take the MacBook, for instance, uh, with a keyboard and a mouse, it's really easy to be precise uh, and you use it for longer interactions. And the same goes for the iPad, with the, even more with the Apple Pencil. Uh, and on the other hand, the, uh, an Apple Watch with a small screen and um, uh, yeah, with a small screen makes it harder to be precise, and you use it for short interactions. So all the Apple pro products uh, are usually in our hands, and we interact with them directly. Uh, but uh, with TVOS, a TV is not in our hands; a remote is. So um, the <laughs> and uh, because of this, the remote makes our uh, control feel diminished compared to the other devices. So you should definitely get to know the remote. It's going to be your new best friend. Uh, it has a, a touch-based surface, an accelerometer, and a gyroscope. And this gives you a variety of possibilities to help the user feel connected to your app. Uh, even though they're sitting at a distance. Uh, and the TVS uses three main gestures. It's swipe, uh, click, and tap. Uh, and on Apple TV, we use the remote to interact indirectly with elements on screen. And the navigation is based on the focus model. And you swipe through co uh, your content with one object always selected. Uh, and this way of navigation is uh, pretty unique compared to all the other devices. So it's crucial to understand the focus engine and to consider how elements should look when focused. So uh, as you saw on previous slides, uh, focus-based interactions are everything on TVS. That's why it's uh, really important to learn how the focus engine works. So what is it? The focus engine is uh, the system that controls uh, focus and focus uh, movement. Uh, most of the co focus engine is implemented in UIKit, but uh, you, there are properties and callbacks that you can uh, use to interact and uh, direct uh, focus uh, for your own needs. Uh, only views can receive focus, uh, and only one view may be in focus uh, at a time. Uh, you get some uh, focusable views by default, like UI button, text field, UI top bar, but UI view itself is not focusable by default. Uh, if you want to check if the view can become focused, you can use uh, can become focused uh, property on UI view. So as you can see here, UI button and UI segment and control uh, can become focused, but UI label and UI view cannot. Uh, both uh, UI view and UI view controller uh, confirm to UI focus environment protocol. Uh, with a set of methods uh, that define the focus behavior for uh, uh, hierarchy of subviews. Uh, for example, a common task on TVOS is to set the initially focused view. So when you go to the screen or a subview gets a focus uh, and this subview has more subviews on it, you should know what should be the next focusable view. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, you can override preferred focus environments uh, property and return uh, an array of uh, subviews sorted by a priority. So in this case, uh, this button will get the initial focus when you go to uh, this UI view controller, for example. Uh, if you want to check what is the current uh, focus view, uh, you can use UI view screen, uh, UI screen property. Uh, or you can also create UI focus system for a specified view and get focused uh, item from there. 
Uh, if you want to force the focus engine to update the currently focused uh, item, you can use set needs focus update and then update focus if needed. It's pretty much the same as we do for uh, auto layout. Uh, and it's kind of useful if you have, uh, for example, dynamic uh, preferred uh, focus environments uh, property. Uh, collection views. Uh, as I told you before, collection views uh, get extra delegate uh, methods. Uh, so you can control focus for cells. For example, you can disable for focus for uh, some index path, uh, or you can set uh, preferred index path. Because by default, uh, it's, uh, the first uh, cell is going to get focus. But if you want to change that for some reason, you can do it in index path for uh, preferred focused view method. Uh, as I told you before, UI view is not focusable by default, but you can change that. So if you override can become focused uh, property and return true, uh, it's going to get focus. But usually that's not enough. Uh, because as a user, you want to see uh, what is current, currently in focus. Uh, that's why you usually implement some sort of animations and uh, uh, transformations there. Uh, so in this example, uh, in order to do animations, we override did update focus uh, method uh, that's available on uh, every uh, view. Uh, and then we can check like, if the next focused view is the current one. Uh, then we can do some animations. And we also make sure that focus animations uh, match uh, the system timing, because most of the focus animations uh, uh, should occur in a sp uh, standard uh, amount of time. Uh, so in this case, we create UI view uh, animation. Uh, we specify inherited animation duration, uh, which we use to make sure that it's uh, in, in match with uh, the system timing. And then we just do some scale transform. Uh, and then we also check, like, if it was the previously focused view, then we just reset it to identity. Uh, so you get the back animation when it loses its focus. Uh, now uh, let's talk a bit about uh, UI focus guide, uh, because uh, most of the time the focus engine works. Uh, it works by default but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so let's take this example. Here we have two buttons. And it's the focus engine is not going to understand that when you swipe down using your remote, you want to go from button A to button B just because this layout is not what uh, the focus engine uh, can work with. Uh, and in this case, you can create UI focus guide. So UI focus guide is a focusable area uh, it's an invisible focusable area that can redirect focus uh, to other focusable views. Uh, so in this case, we create UI focus guide. It extends UI layout guide, so you can add it as a layout guide, guide to your view. Uh, and then you just create some constraints, uh, so you do working with uh, auto layout. Uh, so in this example, we place this invisible area below button A. Uh, so when you swipe down, uh, it's going to focus on that invisible area, but it's going to redirect the focus on button B. And then you get this view working. Uh, when you debug, uh, it's uh, useful to, to check what the focus engine thinks uh, the next uh, focusable view should be. Uh, and then you can override the update focus uh, method uh, on your view and uh, then when, and set a breakpoint. Uh, so when this breakpoint triggers, you just hit space and then you get this nice visual representation. Uh, and in the end of this section, I prepare some tips and tricks. Uh, when you have UI image view, uh, you can always set adjusted uh, image when focused to true, and then it's going to get focused uh, appearance uh, when one of uh, its uh, super views uh, become focused. Uh, when it comes to labels, uh, since iOS 12, uh, we've got more keys. 
so if you set enable marquees when focused to true on a label, uh, then the text will scroll when one of its uh, superviews uh, become focused, which is kind of nice. Before we had to use uh, library, of course. Uh, and if sometimes you get a problem that some view doesn't get focused for some unknown reason, uh, then you can use UCI focus debugger to check flexibility for the specified view. And it's going to print uh, some uh, uh, description of all the problems uh, related to the specified view and the focus. Uh, so at Rixteva, we were a team of, of around nine people during this app project. There were one project owner, one scrum master, and two designers, and around five developers. And during this project, the whole team worked to good together and closely. And we had like great routines, on, um, which helped us be on track and to, <laughs> to create new functions quickly. <laughs> Uh, we usually discussed ideas together and draw sketches on whiteboards uh, or paper. This way it was easier to get ideas out quickly. And also when developers are brought in early in the idea and design process, they can, we can ease more quicker discuss uh, what works and what doesn't and what uh, will take longer time to develop. Uh, and um, also when it's important to, that everyone on the team feels uh, gets ownership of the ideas. Uh, and this way we are all engaged and uh, it's more fun to work together uh, to solve a common goal. Uh, we worked with uh, Scrum. Uh, that's why we had daily stand-ups uh, and weekly sprint plannings, uh, retrospectives and reviews. And that was a really great way to uh, uh, to keep the speed going and to know uh, what everyone is working on. Uh, and also we had some naming conventions and used some common uh, uh, margins, layouts and uh, uh, styles so that we had a common language when we talk with each other about new features or existing functionality. And here are the working tools the team used to work together. So tasks were distributed at Jira and design was created in Sketch. And we also made quick prototypes with Marvel. And this is a great prototype uh, program which works on TVS and you get the same depth feeling and navigation feeling as on a real TVS. And this way of making prototypes make it easier to discuss ideas and like see the ideas live uh, and without coding them from scratch or yeah. <laughs> and uh, also the design were dis delivered to the developers through Zeppelin. Yeah, we developers of course use Xcode and we also use TestFlight for uh, internal distribution. Uh, so all the people within the company had a chance to test the app and report all the uh, bugs that they have found. Uh, yeah. So let's sum up everything we uh, have uh, seen today during this presentation. Uh, human interface guidelines are important both for developers and designers. Uh, but you, you have to keep a balance between your brand and uh, uh, platform uh, guidelines. And Apple is a device for shared experience, so you should uh, consider what kind of shared experience your app can give to a group uh, of people. And uh, apps uh, on TVS are likely to be enjoyed from a distance, so uh, with no direct contact. Uh, so use large graphics and interface elements and provide plenty of spacing and padding between the elements and make sure text are legible and keep the hierarchy of your app simple and straightforward. 
Uh, Focus-based interactions are crucial on TVS. That's why you should really learn how to deal with the uh, Focus Engine to give your users uh, the best experience possible. Uh, and collaboration within a team is, of course, the key to success. Uh, that's why it's uh, important to talk with each other and discuss features and be involved early in the process. Uh, so everyone gets uh, ownership uh, of the ideas uh, and is more motivated. And uh, we also prepared some references for you, so you can uh, go there and read more about TVS design and development. Uh, at the top, you can see some references to human interface guidelines, both important for designers and develop developers. Uh, also, I prepared some uh, repo on GitHub. Uh, it's uh, that TV show room uh, repo that you can go and check out. Uh, and there I just show uh, most of the common uh, components uh, uh, on TVS. Uh, so just check it out uh, and create an issue or, or a pull request. Uh, and yeah, you can always read Apple developer documentation. Uh, and as for design, uh, there is a great article by Eva uh, about designing for TVS. Uh, just go and read it on Medium. Uh, and you can also see some uh, videos from WWDC. Uh, so thank you guys so much for listening. And feel free to follow us on Instagram or Twitter. And uh, my company, or not my, the company I work <laughs> for, <laughs> Binding and Bogen, is hiring people. So feel free to contact if interested. And if you have any questions, we will be at the party later. Yeah, and even though I talked about TVS, now I w I'm working at Finn. So we have a stand downstairs. Just go there and uh, talk with us if you want to know more about Finn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>